I don't know how many of you out there uh, that are either my age or younger who are familiar with Sophia Loren, but uh, if you didn't know, uh, she's basically royalty at this point. She was stunningly beautiful back in her heyday, she's an Academy Award winning actress, and she's also one of the few living actresses to still be considered one of the remnants of what a lot of people consider to be the golden age of Hollywood. And after I watched this movie, I realized this is the first film where she's the main star that I've actually seen the entire way through. And I would feel embarrassed by that, but it turns out the last big thing that she did was the international voiceover work for Cars 2, which is arguably the worst Pixar film ever made. So between that trifle of a movie and this film, I'm pretty sure I got the better end of the deal, but maybe that's just me. Cue the music. Hey everybody, how's it going? How you doing? Welcome back. So the topic for this video is a new Netflix movie called The Life Ahead. And on the surface, the basic plot of this movie might seem a little familiar because it's got the whole adopted child narrative. But this movie ha actually has a little bit more of an edge to it, and uh, I also think it could have been 20 minutes longer. I don't know if I'm alone in that, but I, I guess we'll find out. And the basic plot of the movie, it's about this orphaned kid who's being cared for by a doctor. And the kid, he's a little bit of a troublemaker. He does a few unsavory things. So at one point, the doctor that's caring for him decides to send him to somebody else to be cared for. And that's where Sophia Loren's character comes in. And she is an ex-prostitute who watches over uh, prostitutes' kids, uh, essentially. A bunch of events happen. There's progress between the two characters. And then uh, that's basically the movie. And the first thing I noticed is that this movie has a little bit more of an edge to it than your typical adopted child type movies like it's a little more it's a little more on the edge compared to like your big daddies or like Shazam or maybe even like a free willy if any of you are my age and some movies will try to exploit that a little too much like oh it's it's really funny or it's really raunchy when a kid says the F word when in reality it's it becomes a shtick after a while and then it becomes unimportant this movie did that but it did it a lot more gracefully than some of the other movies I've seen and they didn't overdo it with his dialogue they mostly did it with his personality and the way that he treats people and I thought that was pretty good. And as I don't speak Italian, I can't fully comment on the acting, but from what I saw, everything looked like emotionally pleasing, I guess you could say. And Sophia Loren being the legend that she is, she very easily could have just phoned it in, but I felt all the emotions that she was trying to elicit, so that was good. One of the nitpicks that I have about the movie is some of the music choices, particularly in like the first half of the movie. Because in the second half of the movie, the music is absolutely amazing, and it was perfect, it, like it flowed very well with the story and the mood, and I thought that was good. But there's a spot fairly early in the movie where the kid is just kind of like dancing down the street because he's in a good mood and he's got his headphones on but the music is like I don't remember exactly but I, I think it was like this weird kind of like upbeat kind of polka music and for all I know that music may be much more common in Italy but it, as far as the movie is concerned it didn't really fit the vibe of like the kid it like it didn't feel like something that he would particularly listen to like the kid gave off the vibe that he should be listening to like deathcore or like some hard like gangster rap type music something like that just not this like up like stuff Stuff that you would hear at like an old folks home almost. And also there's a little a tiny subplot with a bicycle that never really gets addressed. Like it shows you a few things for a couple of minutes but then it doesn't like amount to anything really. And the kid also has some dealings with some low-level gangster types and uh, there's a rival of his that again it they, they gave you a few things to focus on but it didn't get fully resolved in my opinion. Or maybe it did technically get resolved but they could have they could have done a little bit more to add some depth to the movie with it. And the last little negative that I have is there's a scene where the kid is hanging out with a bunch of adults and uh, I understand why the kid was there but the whole scene taking place didn't really feel like it made sense like it didn't feel like any of the other characters would be cool with the event like what was happening in that moment it was just weird aside from that though this is actually a pretty well done movie acting was fine from what I could tell the second half of the movie's music was spectacular and I thought that the progression from where the kid's relationship was with Sophia Loren's character was at the beginning to where it was at the end it was a very natural very seamless progression and despite a few things in the movie feeling out of place the character dynamic between the little kids Sophia Loren and some of the other kids she's caring for none of that felt out of place at all that was a very 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 fluid progression and it made total sense and there's also a trans character in the movie that kind of weaves in and out of the story again same thing the character dynamic felt flawless between her and everybody else and another really cool thing is that the kid he kind of has this weird specter that he sees kind of while he's awake but also in his dreams and I thought that specter was a really really creative way to show another side of this kid's personality. The CGI wasn't all that great, but it didn't matter because you could very, very clearly tell what the specter was, and that's really all that matters. And the last thing that I'll say is I really like the ending. 
It totally made sense for the story and it was emotional. There was weight to it. It was just, it was everything I wanted. So I think overall, if I had to give it a score out of 10, I think I would give it something like a 7.7. .7. Even though it was lacking in a few different departments, I still found it very entertaining and I had a, you know, I had a good emotional response. So you know what? Movie did its job. But anyway, guys, those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Have you guys seen this movie? Have you even heard of it? Hop in the comments. Let me know what's up. Other than that, if you like this review, do the usual like, subscribe, share, hit the bell, do all that other YouTube-y type of shenanigans. And I will catch you guys next time.